I ended up psyching myself up one night and said, you know, I've just got to kill this man. I kicked his door in and I rushed him onto his couch, stuck the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. You didn't cross Eric Earhart, especially if you owed this big time drug dealer money. You have to build up this reputation as someone who is not to be messed with. And, and so and it played right into the rage I already had in me. That rage started early in Eric's life. His father, a self-employed commercial fisherman, injured his back and couldn't work for two years. His mother went to the government for help, but she was turned down. I was mad at my father. Why have you checked out of my life here at uh, 10, 11, 12 years old when I need you? Where are you? Where's my, where's my Superman? Um, I was mad at my mom because she couldn't pick up the pieces. She was not emotionally capable of picking those pieces up for our family. And I was um, angry at the system. And um, so, I be, you know, I began to steal. I began to do some things, uh, sell some drugs. I, I was going to uh, fix it myself. Eric's anger spilled out into other areas of his life. At school, he started fighting students and even teachers. Somewhere in there, I crossed the line um, where it was no longer even trying to be a good boy anymore. I'd embrace this lifestyle. I thought I was a man because of the drugs, the sex, the violence. You feel like a man. You're in a man's world. Um, but I was a child. I had failed at several job opportunities and uh, was getting fired, hitting, beating up bosses. Um, and, and so I was, I was in a dead end. Eventually, he moved to the North Carolina coast, where an old friend gave him an opportunity he couldn't pass up. I thought that I had finally achieved some measure of success. Uh, I couldn't do it in the military. I couldn't do a legitimate business. But now, with the cocaine trade, I've, I've achieved some level of success. And when customers didn't pay on time, he flew into a rage. I've done everything from taking an alarm clock and bash a man's face in with it, beating a man with a baseball bat. And at every, at every turn, you could feel your soul just uh, hardening. But one customer pushed him over the edge. He continued to uh, just spread rumors in the community that he was not going to pay me, and I wouldn't do anything about it. He broke through the man's door. I stuck the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger, and click, nothing happened. I told him, um, you know, leave town, or I'm going to kill you. It's Christmas night. I'm going to let you live. And I went home that night, and, and I got drunk, and I cried all night, and I thought to myself, um, you really are crazy. So I began to think suicide um, was probably the right way out. I really didn't have an answer. I was hopeless. I was, I was a hopeless man. The next day, his girlfriend introduced him to her mother, who put it to him straight. She said, has anybody ever told you that you're going to hell? And I was shocked. I mean, no one had ever told me that. I had, you know, no one had confronted me at all my evil with the idea that I was going to hell. And then she said, has anybody told you that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come and died so that you could be forgiven of that sin? I had no knowledge of church. I had zero knowledge of Jesus and God. None of those things, are, those were all foreign um, ideas to me. But I knew that I had to do something. I had to turn my life around. I had to change my life. But he wanted to make one more drug run before trying to change his ways. He drove to New York and picked up a shipment of cocaine. But on the way back across the North Carolina state line, police were waiting for him. They find the drugs, the firearm, and um, as I laid there, and I just looked up and I said, thank God it's over. When he made bail, he went to a local beach and cried out to God. It made me decide that if, if there's a God out there, I better have a talk with him because I am a, I am a deeply disturbed man. And I just start to weep and cry, and I start to cry out to uh, God, and I said, if you're there, you know, show me. Eric was sentenced to seven years. While in prison, he started searching the Bible for answers. I began to read the Bible daily, five, six, seven, eight hours a day sometimes. And, of course, the Lord began to reveal himself to me in that, and through that I came to faith in Christ as my Lord. Eric only served three and a half years of his sentence. He was moved to a prison camp, and toward the end of his time, he was given a six-hour community pass one weekend a month. He used that time to go to church, where he met Pastor Wallace Phillips. I was drawn to Eric because he, he seemed to have such a passion for Christ. We m made the effort to go out and, and meet with him in the prison camp and uh, had the occasion to talk about the things of God. 
he helped Eric realize that God had a greater purpose for his life. God has been uh, so faithful, he sent me a beautiful wife, has given me a lovely family, he has allowed me to start the Upper Room Assembly. We've seen him grow to a uh, tremendous ministry, doing great work for the Lord here in this community. I've been born again. I've been resurrected to a newness of life, and, and old things have passed away. And uh, behold, all things have become new.